Hi, my name is Kolemke. I'm going to show you how to take a hand-drawn work of art that was scanned, photographed, or whatever, and get it set up for screen printing using Photoshop. So let's open Photoshop here. Uh, I will do a little disclaimer and say that this video is kind of geared towards my neighbor. The idea is that I'm uh, sharing information with him in exchange for uh, trade and, and uh, use of his shop and his and equipment. So this is kind of a test run. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully people find it informative, but again, it's kind of specific to his needs. Anyways, uh, let's get started. We're going to open up a um, hand-drawn work of art. Let's zoom into this. As you can see, the uh, ink work, there's streaks in the lines. Uh, the pencil, you know, is using this blue pencil. You can still see all the pencil marks. Uh, it's not clean. It's not ready to go. So let's start uh, getting it set up. And so the first thing I would do is hop up to image, go to adjustments, go to hue and saturation. And when you click this, it will bring up a, a window and we want to move this middle slider bar. This is the saturation bar. So when we pull this all the way left, everything becomes black and white. You can notice it now blue mostly. Look at that. Yeah. And, uh, even if you don't use a blue pencil, even if you use like a gray pencil, I still re recommend doing this. Uh, like a photograph or even a scan sometimes get re gets reflective light. So you'll have a yellow or blue tint or something you might not even notice. So just pull that all the way down and everything will be black and white. So after we do that, we go back up to image and go to auto tone and you'll see what this does. It basically just strengthens the blacks and the whites. So after we do that, go back up to image, adjustments and levels. Over here, this little window pops up, and over here we have, uh, this relates to the darks, this relates to the lights. So usually you wanna bring the darks to the highest peak. That means now black is down the blackest of black. We want the whites kind of out of this range. And you'll see it starts clearing up. This middle one, at this point, just kind of strengthens or weakens the line work. So I kind of pull it a little bit to the right. I'm not gonna to get too picky here just for this example. So that's pretty good. Once you find a spot you like, just hit okay. Now, over here, when you bring in an image from uh, into Photoshop that's a flattened image, like a JPEG, it usually makes it the default background layer, and this layer is locked. It's uh, not good to work with, so we want to fix that. So how you fix that is just simply double-clicking this, and that little window pops up. We can rename the file. We'll call it Artwork, and you just hit OK. Now it's unlocked. It's not a background layer. It's a nice, easy layer to work with. This is good. So let's zoom out a little bit. And now that we're at this point, we want to grab the magic wand tool. I think by default, it starts off as this quick selection tool. You simply just click and hold it, and this little option will come up, and you select the magic wand tool. And uh, the thing to notice up here with this ma magic wand tool is this contiguous. Is that the word, contiguous? I don't even know what that word means. I use this thing all the time. I have no idea what that word means. But basically, uh, it has a little checkbox here, and we toggle off the checks. And I'll show the different options. When it's unchecked, and you select some, select an area it will select all the same color so I selected an area of white over here and it selected every area of white that's in the layer now if we uncheck it and I select an area of white it will only select the area of white that I selected so it's very kind of useful and we'll see how we use that in a, in a second but let me just kind of do that again here I'm selecting the eye and I have it checked so it only selects this eyeball where the um, line work is here again select that eyeball but then again if I uncheck it and select the eye, it selects all the black. So it's a really cool feature. So let's go back, let's check this, and let's just select this area white. We don't need this, this is gonna be our background there. So once it's all selected, we just simply delete it. And as you can see, now it's transparent, showing the background, it's all this checkered mark. But actually the background is gonna be the color of the t-shirt, correct? So let's go down here, this little box will make a new layer in Photoshop. So we just click that and it makes a new layer. By default, the layer goes to the top. Since it's gonna be our t-shirt color and it's the background, we wanna click and drag it below the artwork and actually double click the text to rename it. We'll call it T-shirt color. Bah. Boom. Okay, now I think we did like a dark gray for this t-shirt, right? So I come in here to the color picker. I just click this little icon right here. Click a color that I want. I want this dark gray. Hit OK, and we got our color picked, we got our layer selected, we just go up to Edit, Fill, and then hit OK. Voila, 
There we go. Uh, now we got our t-shirt color in there. So now that we got that set up, I'm gonna go back to our artwork. I'm gonna click this, the, uh, God, what is it called? The magic wand tool again. This time I'm gonna uncheck the contiguous, contiguous, whatever that word is, uh, button, uncheck. And I'm gonna select the white. And now it selects all the white. This is great. So we come up to edit, go to copy, edit again, paste, and automatically just pasted all that white onto a new layer. I'm gonna hide this layer. This little eyeball is sim simply toggling, toggling off the uh, visibility. So here's our new layer of white. Let's rename it. We'll rename it color actually, because it's not gonna be white in the end. Come back to this artwork, select the artwork again, do the same exact thing with the black. Select the black, we select all the black, because this is unchecked. Come up to edit, go to fill, or wait, shoot, why did I select fill, my bad. Edit, copy, edit, paste. And here's our ink layer, ink. And typically in this uh, format, um, you want the ink on top, colors in the middle, t-shirt color on the bottom. And we actually don't need this artwork level uh, layer anymore. So we can either click and drag it and delete it, or we can just stick it under here in case you, know, you wanna save it just in case. I would also toggle off the visibility and just leave it off. Um, so what's next now? Oh, so next, we probably don't want this color to be white. It's a skate deck. So let's make it like a dark or a brown. It doesn't have to be a dark brown. So I go in here, select my dark color using the color picker. Uh, and then to make it a dark brown, I like to do this. I like to lock the layer. So I come up here to this, lock the layer. It's got this little lock. So now this layer is locked. This is a really cool feature. So what happens now when I try to brush over this layer is that it'll only paint where there's information. So I'm holding down the mouse and I'm just going like crazy and it's only painting when there's already information. I'll show you the difference with it out uh, when it's not locked. So when it's not locked, it's doing this. But when it's locked, it's doing this. Very cool. So while we have this layer selected and, and, and locked, and while we have our color selected, we just simply go up to edit, fill, enter. Boom, and now it's all brown. Really cool. And um, I always recommend doing this too with ink. You can kind of see it right now. It actually picks up some grays and some stuff like that. So even if you're not even changing the color, if you're keeping it black, I still recommend redoing it black. Same process, locking the layer, selecting the layer, selecting the color you want, edit, fill, enter. And you can see that uh, it even popped a little bit. You know, it, it became, uh, the black got a little more bold. So it's very nice. You can tell it made it even a little difference. So now we're actually looking pretty good. Uh, essentially, this is almost good to go. The, the big problem we have here now is that the brown is butting up against the black. There's actually no room for error when screen printing. So we want to add that trapping, you know, that little bit of a safe zone. So how I do that is I usually come up here to the opacity and turn it down. This will make the black transparent. You can already see the blacks kind of turning into dark gray because it's um, overlapping with this color right here. So when we have that transparent, we come to this layer and we just simply double click it. And when we double click it, this comes up. And there's all these effects options. These are all effects. Uh, the one we want to use is stroke. So we click this and it automatically adds a stroke of black. By default, the, uh, the stroke is black and we don't want that. So select this and this little window will come up here. This is all your options for uh, the stroke. So let's zoom in a little bit on an area like this. And to change that black, we simply click this area. We'll bring up a little color picker. And uh, by moving off it over here into the artwork, it'll automatically select the eyedropper. So I just simply click the brown, and all of a sudden, boom, it's brown. So we hit OK. And it may appear darker, but again, we have this layer on uh, a transparency. So it's technically all the same color, but where it's darker are where the two colors are over, where the ink and the uh, where the ink is overlapping the color. So this is uh, this dark area is actually your trapping area, and you can determine how little or much trapping you want. You know, so you can pull the slider back on the size up top, back and forth. And um, obviously, you can see there's a little bit of area that's pinching out over here. So it's not a hundred percent perfect, but it's almost ninety. 
98% perfect, 99% perfect, just really close. But we can just leave this and touch up that little area manually, uh, no sweat. So now that we got that in there, we can turn this back up. We don't need that, so simply go back up to 100 and now it's full black. Uh, there is a problem though with this being a, an effect. And the problem is, is like I said, erasing this area, we wouldn't be able to erase it because that's actually the stroke that's making that feature, not the actual layer. So what we want to do is embed the stroke into a, the layer. Um, and actually, let me give you another, another example of why having this uh, as an effect is bad. If we come up and say you want to print your film, so you need to change this all to black, and you go fill, enter, black, the stroke is actually still that brown color. You can go in and change the stroke and whatever. But but, anyways, I just re recommend simply doing this. This is down here at the bottom. We create a new layer. And I would shift click both of them. You can hold right click and go down to merge layer if you want. I prefer using hotkeys. I think hotkeys are golden. So control E also merges the layer. But again, right click, merge layers. And now we have the stroke embedded in the file. It's part of the file. So when I want to come in here and erase, and actually I'm going to um, point something out really quick while we're doing this. Uh, if you ever forget to leave, if you forget to leave this locked while you're erasing, erasing, it will actually use the background color. So start painting the background color. It won't erase. It will actually act as a brush. So if you're ever trying to erase and you're like, why isn't it erasing? It's probably because you forgot that this layer is locked. So when you need to erase, you need to make sure you unlock this layer. So now that we have that un layer un unlocked, we can erase that little zone, tidy up, nice and perfect. Um, I accidentally made that red, so I'll fix that really quick. Boom, boom, boom. As simple as that. And now we're looking pretty good. This is actually good to go. The last thing to do would to be to get it set up for your film. So when you need to set it up for your film, uh, simply hide the layers. This one's already black, so that one's good to go. But with this one, again, lock the layer, select your color, which is going to be black from the color picker. Go up here, paste, fill, boom. And now you're ready to print your film. Looking good. So this is just a two color quick separation. You could actually do more by, by again, using this and selecting out individual if you wanted to make the wheels white, you know, you just select the, oops, select the individual wheel, you know, select shift to select another one, shift to select another one, and boom, you could copy those, put those on another layer, make that a white color, you could change the wings if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so it's kind of good to go. I think the last thing to do would be to save it, always save your work. So now that we got that up there. So let's just save as final. Well, I hope that wasn't too complicated and I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, you should be good to go. That was taking a hand drawing and turning, getting it all set up for screen printing. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Adios.